Malaria kills more than 600,000 people every year, most of them children. But new vaccine developments decades in the making could soon change that. Early last month, the World Health Organization approved the R21 vaccine to prevent the deadly disease, and a new NOVA documentary takes viewers into the long-fought battle from development and testing to approval. One child dies every single minute from malaria. For almost a century, scientists have had one goal. We don't want to use the word the holy grail, but if we got vaccines, then of course that would be transformation. This is the inside story across four continents of a new vaccine against malaria. You are touching human life. You are going to save the human life. It's not one or two, it's millions of lives. I'm joined now by one of the producers of The Battle to Beat Malaria, Catherine Gale, who has a PhD in research in HIV and personalized medicine, and one of the scientists behind the vaccine, Sir Adrian Hill, founder of the Jenner Institute at Oxford University and chief investigator of the R21 Matrix M clinical trial program. Thank you so much, both of you, for, for joining me. So you really need to watch the film to, it's a very suspenseful film, right? It kind of shows how long fought this process is. How long has it been, right? I think someone in the, the film mentions it's like 120 years of trying to develop something to, to address this problem that's so pervasive in so many places. The, the parasite itself that causes malaria was identified in 1880. About 30 years later, attempts to make a vaccine started. Some people must have thought it was doable in uh, 1908. Uh, so it's been a very long road. Over 100 vaccine candidates have been tried in people, and only a couple really have done something that's useful. So yes, it's been very difficult. And, um, you know, we're just absolutely delighted that this has come to a happy ending at last. If I ask you, Adrian, why is has the malaria vaccine been so much more difficult? I, there is some comparison in the film to other vaccines. What is it about the what is it about malaria that was so difficult to kind of figure out a vaccine for? Yeah, well, lots of things, to be honest. I'll give you two two big problems. Firstly, malaria is not a virus. It's much, much larger. It's a parasite. It has thousands of genes. COVID-19 had 11. Everybody agreed on what the one antigen you needed from that virus was that should work. And so it turned out. In malaria of the 5,000, yeah, we've tested lots, but, you know, not hundreds. And uh, nobody was sure which was the right part of the parasite to put in the vaccine. And then it turned out when we got to clinical trials, you needed extremely strong antibody responses to get any protection. I mean, you know, 10%, 20%, not 80%. So it's been, uh, you know, a work of 30 years to get the antibody responses to a level where they are really useful and they are saving children's lives. And uh, this has been worthwhile. It's been a huge effort. And we've learned a lot for the vaccine, from, for the vaccine field as a whole, not just for malaria vaccine design. There's a moment in the film when you see a scientist becoming so emotional at the, the realization that the World Health Organization has approved this and that it is going to be able to be actually be, be implemented. <laughs> Um, Catherine, I wanted to ask you, in the creation of this movie, what was it like following this when there were so many unknowns, right? I mean, I think part of it, too, was that they're, they were producing this vaccine, millions of doses of it, without actually knowing if the time that it, it was going to be approved, if those would be expired, right? So you're all just kind of waiting to see what's going on. What was that process like for you? Yeah, it's, um, it's unusual, um, you know, when you make science documentaries to actually get a story and get the opportunity to follow a story in real time. Um, and, you know, this absolutely was that, you know, we sort of, I've been aware of the work with R21 for a long time. We'd worked with the team at Oxford previously on um, a documentary about their COVID vaccine when that was developed during the pandemic. So we were aware of that work and we've been following it and we've been trying to get a documentary commissioned. And it was with Tangle Bank Studios coming on board that enabled us to begin to really follow it. But, you know, the the jeopardy that the, um, you know, the team 
were going through in terms of the hurdles they had to get through with the different phases of the trials, with manufacturing, is it going to work? Are they going to get the the approval? All of, you know, that was a jeopardy that we faced as one of those filmmakers because we didn't know what the end was going to be. But we were committed to following it um, regardless of what the outcome was going to be because fundamentally um, the story that we were following and the, the development of this vaccine is it, it tells you something about the way that science works, about the way that um, vaccine development works, about research, about how we learn from failure, about how you have to persevere and persevere, as Adrian's described, over decades in order to get to a result. It's not something I think there's there's a lot more vaccine literacy now because of the pandemic and because of the COVID vaccines. But I think in a way that's given us all a bit of a false impression as to how easy vaccine development is because it's really not and particularly you know in this case it was incredibly difficult and took a very long time to get there but you know we were committed to following it regardless of what the outcome was going to be because the um, you know the, the story of that journey um, is as important as the outcome. Yeah I think you really captured the suspense and the this I think you know as you as several people said in this movie you know we've tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and failed and failed and failed um Sir Adrian I wanted to ask you you know what is the if you can just sort of try to encompass the impact like what this means for so many people now and and what kind of impact it will have on the world for this to exist so the most important impact will be on lives saved. You know, these are young children. They're, they're not two week olds. They're maybe two year olds. They have personalities. They are individuals. And one day they're alive and running around and two days later they're dead. This is absolutely crushing for mothers that came across during, during the film. It's not a new idea that we would try and control malaria or even eradicate malaria. It's been extraordinarily difficult. You know, people have been trying to do this since the 1950s with bed nets, with spraying, with drugs, with all sorts of interventions, new and new and old. And finally, I think we're getting to the stage where we have reasonable control with old tools, if you can count half a million deaths a year or more as reasonable, uh, better than it was in 2000 when there were about a million deaths a year. But now here we have vaccines for the first time being rolled out from early next year. And, you know, the vaccine the documentary is about has efficacy of over 70%, close to 80%. So that should make a real impact. And let's wait and see. But the great thing is that even in the poorest countries, in the poorest part of the poorest countries in Africa, in those rural districts, vaccines are given today to nearly all the children, up to 10 different vaccines. And, uh, you know, some of the field teams tell me that's great, but, but where's the malaria vaccine? Now, number 11 is, is malaria. So people understand that, you know, the neighbor's children who die overnight at two years of age have probably died of malaria. So this is very much a vaccine needed, not just by public health authorities who can count the deaths and try to do something about it, but by families with children, with personalities who, who, who drop dead very suddenly. You mentioned the sprays and some of the other kind of placeholder solutions. Mosquitoes, and this is talked about in the film, have evolved, right, to be able to to just be impervious to those kind of placeholder solutions. Is there some concern that malaria will evolve over time or that there will need to be a new version of this in the future? Yeah, so a couple of things to say. Um, it's very unlikely because we've deliberately chosen one of those thousands of antigens that has a simple repeat sequence that our antibodies bind to. The parasite would have to go through rounds and rounds and rounds of multiplication to escape the vaccine. So we think that's one of the advantages of this vaccine design. And, you know, look, look, looking forward, we don't expect to be using this vaccine for 50 years. We would anticipate that now we have a new tool that will help us not just control malaria, but eliminate it locally and regionally. And then in the next 10 or so years, begin to eradicate malaria in the 2030s. 
and then we're done with the problem. And that not only is huge for public health, it also means we save the $4 billion a year that the world has been spending to control malaria, even before these vaccines have come along. So getting rid of malaria, like getting rid of polio and smallpox is a realistic target and something that I think we should be able to do. Great. Catherine Gale and Sir Adrian Hill, thank you both so much for joining us. The Battle to Beat Malaria premieres tonight at 9 p.m. on GBH2 at pbs.org nova and on the PBS app.